three, forward, back, change. This room of mirrors Diamonds on your feet. And up. is filled with the aspirations of young students. Keep there, following there. Learning and, and growing in the art of ballet. Big lead. Instructing them lead. is a woman whose and own lead. journey is blossoming within these brick walls. Good. From nine years old when I started doing ballet, I knew this is what I want to be, this is what I want to do. Like, no question about it. At the age of 26, Marise Fumero is living her dream as a leading artist for the Milwaukee Ballet Company. Enjoy the music, follow the art. Her talent stretches from her fingertips to her toes. She's a very stunningly beautiful lady. She has all of the physical attributes that you would look for in a classical dancer. To make this stage of her life a reality, this young ballerina has had to leap through many obstacles. Born and raised in Cuba, Fumero recalls a life with limited resources. She trained at the Cuban National Ballet School. I used to wear a pair of point shoes during two years. How often are you supposed to have them for? A week. Like right now, I use one pair a week. Her father would fix her shoes as best he could. Oh, my dad, he didn't know anything about point shoes at all, but he used to fix my shoes. There was no other way. I think I was 12. Yeah. But Fumero and her family, I really love sparkles, <laughs> always seem to so find the way. I learned to do my own clothes in Cuba. I love sewing. I, I make all my skirts for ballet. I love making uh, headpieces. Something she says she learned from her mother. It's like a hobby for me. It's like I love doing that. <laughs> After graduation, she joined the National Ballet of Cuba. At the age of 21, she made the difficult choice of leaving her family and country for the first time to join the English National Ballet in London. She only knew how to pronounce one word. I just get there and I see people and I just say hi. She danced her way through a language barrier. If they mark like their arms, they do that, I knew what they were talking about. Otherwise, <laughs> I was lost, completely lost. That was really hard for me at the beginning. She balanced grueling training schedules and English classes at night. The opportunity to come to the United States opened up with the Milwaukee Ballet Company. And she has a great work ethic. Artistic director Michael Pink describes her as a devoted artist. I find that the more of the international people that I've worked with throughout my career, and particularly when they come from countries like Cuba, where they've had to work terribly hard to get to where they are today, not only just to be able to study in their country, but then to leave that country and, and explore their careers. Fumero is now entering her fifth season. She's busy conquering a list of diverse roles. When I do evil roles, it's, it's amazing. Most recently, she portrayed the wicked stepmother in Mirror Mirror, a twist on the classic tale of Snow White. Crossing over to darker roles is appealing for her. I feel like really empowered. One, two, three, and stretch. Fumero says her future ambitions are not driven by a desire for fame, but a desire to move an audience with her footwork. She will set a standard within the company. She is a great role model to them about how you behave as an artist if you want to succeed. Yeah. A lesson she wants to pass down to the aspiring dancers in her classroom. Go forward. You keep rehearsing and rehearsing and making your piece like a diamond, the best it could be. Stay fit. One, two, three. It's an instrument with a rich history. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. At the United Community Center on Milwaukee South Side, it's in the hands of youngsters. Did we crescendo? Eager to learn it. We should we'll hear a wall of sound there. At the head of this classroom is Dinora Marquez, the founder and director of the Latino Art Strings program in Milwaukee. Her passion for teaching is visible Two, three, at every moment of a lesson. She speaks Spanish. Watch me. English. Sometimes both. No hablen. And other times. Scooby, doo -doo 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 -doo. a language all her own. 
to her, this instrument creates more than music. My original thought was, music saves lives. It saved my life. Marquez was born in Mexico and immigrated to the U.S. at 10 years old. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of violence in my family, and so I had a lot going against me, and um, I couldn't speak the language, and at home things were bad. Bad, but about to get better. On e. Then I got this violin in my hand. It was a four-stringed revelation. I've got a voice. You know, I was, I was really into it. I worked hard at it. It served as her calling when she came to the center. I also saw a great population of uh, immigrant or children of immigrants, Latino youth, who we all know have tons of talent, but it, it was untapped. She started the program in 2002. It's grown from a couple dozen students to over 200. The idea was to establish a program that would give low-income Latino youth the opportunity of seriously studying a string instrument. The program is based on grants and donations. Students enrolled are on a scholarship. That's right. Marquez says limited funds make it hard to pick out the applicants. So she uses a lottery system. And then we pick a name out of a hat. Because it's based on lottery, I didn't get in right away. Elizabeth Avalos was one of the lucky students. She says the violin changed the course of her life. Even as young as first grade, I noticed academically how much it helped me. This is my speed guitar. Avalo says it was a game changer to have a teacher she could relate to. I feel like it just opened up a whole other world for me. It's an experience they share with others at performances like Mexican Fiesta. It's in moments like these, Marquez feels her students have a deeper connection with their roots. Being a Mexican, being a Latina, to me, it was really clear that our students uh, needed to know where they came from and needed to know that where they come from is extremely rich. Rich like the history of the very strings they play. With each song, captivating audiences while learning more about themselves. Kids come to know who they are and they walk out of here with a very strong sense of self-identity. Because in the right hands, this can truly be an instrument of change. Right, and go, throw them down. Driven, there you go. determined, and never one to shy away from hard work. I'm more competitive with myself, like no one, it's a harder judge than myself. There you go, breathe through. Marisol Coriano is in the middle of training for a half marathon. Keep that back tall. That's just how she spends her free time. Here you can see the different type of data at a plant level. Her days are typically filled with presentations. We're talking about the future, but the future is now. And meetings. And there's a generational difference now. As the vice president of human resources for Rockwell Automation, Coriano supports close to 9,000 employees. I truly decided to go into human resources because I thought that it was matching my strengths better. We have a lot of strong power and my sense of purpose of helping organizations and individuals be the best that they can be, right? She has a lot of different experiences. One of her favorite tasks, her energy, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Is encouraging people from all over to consider a STEM career. I will do it for free and I'm very lucky that they pay me to do it. But Coriano recalls a time when the path up the corporate ladder wasn't so clear. Born and raised in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'm an industrial engineer, uh, and I always wanted to complement my industrial engineer with business. She became the first person in her family to pursue a higher degree in the United States. Coming from this little island where we think that that's the center of the universe. She left at the age of 28. I wanted to become fully bilingual, still with the accent, but still fully bilingual. She says she wanted to broaden the world of opportunity but trying to master the English language was a struggle. I would leave work with a headache every single day. It wasn't until she learned Portuguese that English soon followed. 
While chasing her dream, it was her first boss, Luisa, that helped her move forward. One thing that, that I appreciate about her is that she gave me a lot of time to study, stretching me to expose me. That stretch that she gave me and that confidence was immeasurable. Coriano models that guidance in her current role. A lot of people in my family didn't go to college to inspire the next generation. One of the things that I really like about her is that she's not only involved with her role here at Rockwell, but she's also involved with the community, and that's something that I definitely want to do as well. After more than 20 years of global management and cross-cultural experience across a variety of industries, human resources remains her passion. It's a sense of purpose. It's, it's, it's loving what you do and doing it with love. With the support of her husband, James, he knew, I think, before me that I could reach this level. So he's my, you know, our, my biggest fan and supporter. And their family. They're very proud. Welcome in and go. Coriano has go. no plans of slowing down. That is who I am. In what's become her life mission. Helping others Last one here. get the opportunities that I've been very lucky to have. A trip to the movie theater often transports us to a storyline very different from our own. For some, it's a ritual shared with good company. Thank you. No problem. For Rolando Rodriguez, it became the foundation of his career. We just had a record second quarter. After holding executive level positions at Walmart and other movie companies. I'm the chairman, president and CEO of Marcus Theaters. How does it feel to say that? You know, it feels good. Rodriguez's career has come full circle. It's hard to believe it started by tearing movie tickets as a team. Tearing tickets led to working in the concession stand, you know, eventually led to a management position. Colleagues say he's one of a kind. Because of his unique experience and exposure, he's always pushing the envelope to think bigger. But his storyboard starts in another country. As you can tell by my accent, I was born in Cuba. Rodriguez, his brother, mother, and father came to the United States when he was 11 years old, but he vividly remembers life under communist rule. The best way I can describe it is that I became a pretty good boxer. The movies became their temporary escape. Every Sunday, every, and I do mean every Sunday, our family went to the movies. During the tough times in Cuba, Rodriguez recalls the words of his father. La pelea que gana es la que nunca debes de tener. Translation, the fight you win is the one you never have. What I, he meant by that is even if you win that fight, the reality is that you just made an enemy. Instead, his parents led by example, showing the value of hard work. Once in the U.S., Rodriguez recalls his parents working multiple jobs to get by, all the while keeping their Sunday family tradition alive. When he tells you that family is everything, family is everything. As he was working the ranks of AMC theaters as a young adult, he met the leading lady of his life, his wife, Maria. That's been absolutely the best thing in my life. She provided us with four amazing, wonderful daughters. She was also the one by his side when he made the decision to go back to school later in his life. It's safe to say she's been there for every plot twist, including the one that unfolded at the time of his graduation. My father finds out that he has cancer. And I'll never forget him being in the hospital at the time. I said, Dad, it would give me great pride if you're there with me when I walk and get my diploma. <laughs> he was there. And my mom was there. <laughs> Every experience has molded him into the leader he is today. For now, he is enjoying the current storyline of his life, a CEO that believes in the power of diversity, how it can strengthen the film business and how it strengthens a company. He truly cares and gives back and wants to see others succeed, and he wants to share uh, what he's learned. Rodriguez helps champion Cine Latino, a film festival under the Marcus Theater umbrella. This year's film lineup also made history at the Oscars. Incredible pride uh, by the fact that Coco won Best Animated Picture. Uh, the fact that Shape for Water, the director, the best picture of the year, was in essence, you know, a Mexican director. He may have built a life far away from his roots. I am very proud of my Hispanic heritage. Equally as proud 
to be an American.